hello. Um, we'll just jump right into it, knowing that we don't have much time. I know everybody's hungry and ready to eat. Um, we are just going to discuss the Turn Up Player Survey results. And as uh, Jill's pointed out, I do want to acknowledge Gina Silva, who put together uh, this survey. He really helped with that with Ronald, um, as well as the outreach and communication team. Um, today, we will just briefly, I'll give a brief background to what uh, this project is all about. And then we'll have some interactive results, which we want you all to participate in. Ronald is putting the instructions for that portion into the chat. So uh, feel free to check that out and uh, get ready for that section. And then we'll have a few recommendations. And then, of course, our conclusion and future research. Um, just as background, um, this two, 23, uh, 23 survey was developed really to get the insight of the players, their perspectives, um, just different demographics, who's playing, things like that, really to improve and grow Eterna. And so uh, we know that there have been surveys in the past. I think the, the one most people are familiar with was the one used in um, Ben Keep's dissertation. And so we'll show today um, some of those results. We had about 163 responses in this particular survey. And then in that survey in 2015, there were about 210 responses. This survey, we definitely, um, I know there were some questions about why certain questions were asked. And a lot of this um, survey will be helpful for uh, getting grants in the future. It really supports the work of Eterna. And so all of the questions that were asked in this survey, um, we'll highlight a few. It won't be all of the results that we got um, for today, but it is helpful for this grant writing and for continuing the work. Our results uh, today include data from um, Eterna Player Participant Survey from this year, also national estimates from 2021 um, was the closest one we got with a lot of those estimates, and then being Ben Keep survey results from 2015, and so we'll try to have some comparison um, there for you all as well. So Ronald, are we ready for our interactive portion? Yes. Okay. So, all right, so everyone, uh, hello. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our presentation. So if you go to uh, kahoot.it, and I put that, so actually let me share my screen. Okay, so this is a, a quiz type game. And uh, on some of the questions, you select one possible answer. Uh, or you will be prompted to select several. And let's get started. All right, here we go. No. So this one. So what were the top two motivations for players on Eterna? You. All right, and this is time, so we're down to three seconds. All right, so the top two motivations were learning about science and having a larger impact uh, on science and society, and that was a surprise. I was I was expecting that enjoying puzzle games would be in the top two. So here's the leaderboard. And these were the actual survey results. Um, so actually enjoy puzzle games was pretty close. And but these were the, the top two. All right. So how are we doing? Ready for the next one? Okay. Yes. All right, let's go. <clears throat> so on average, uh, how many hours on average per week does a turn up player spend? It's a little hard because we have to look at your screen and then also then look at our screen. I mean, our screen doesn't tell us the options. It just gives us the, the geometry. All right. So the answer to that question was 2.13 hours. So on average. And this is the leaderboard. And in comparison to Ben Keep's survey, 
In 2015, it was four hours, just about, per player. In 2023, it's down to 2.13 hours, and that's assuming that our sample represents everyone on Eterna. All right, um, next question. So how often do Eterna players contribute to labs? The answer is that 36% often or sometimes contribute to labs. Here's the leaderboard. All right, so RNA Junkie is on the heels of Steve Clark on the leaderboard. And so combining these two answers often and sometimes, 36% um, contribute to labs in um, So actually, this is about the same. So in 2015, it was also 36%. Well, I'm sorry. It's in 2015, 30% of players had submitted to lab designs. So now uh, we have players, or more often players, contribute to labs. And here's the next question. So. on another diversity. Okay, so the first question, or I'm sorry, the first answer was the correct one. Oh, we have a new first place on the leaderboard. And uh, Eterna is made up of 58% male players. And in the United States, um, different estimates are that between 51 and 55% of video game players uh, are male. So uh, Eterna is uh, beyond, beyond that number, above that number. Um, in 2015, 27.6% of players were women. And in 2023, it's about 32% of players were women. Here's the next slide. Average age of Eterna players. Okay, so this one is going to be a little bit controversial just because of how uh, I came up with this estimate, but here are the answers to the question. Um, and so this is from 2023. On average, um, Eterna players in 2023 are older than players in 2015. And when we asked what age cate category are you in, um, these are the results that we got. So you can see the distribution on this graph. Um, and what I did was I would take the average of each category in order to come up with this estimate. So that may not be the best way, but it's hard to unpack uh, data to compare it to Ben Keep's study. He asked how many or how old are you in years? People fill that in. Um, in our survey, we asked uh, by age category so we could compare it to national um, statistics. But in 2015, the average age on Eterna was 28.9. So it seems that the player base is older. Here's another question. So what were the four largest categories of household income for players on Eterna? All right, 
this one was uh, a bit of a surprise. Well, here's the leaderboard. Okay, so Steve Clark is again in the lead. And here are the answers. So um, just in comparison, the US median household income in 2023 is estimated at $69,000. And the four categories were um, zero to 25,000, 25 to 50,000, 50,000 to 75,000. And then the fourth category was um, eternal players making over 150,000 a year. So that was a surprise. And here we go to the next question. So what are the top four industries where you find Eterna players? have the answers and let's take a look at the leaderboard so uh, the top two positions are really close and here are the answers so the top four industries were healthcare science technology education and retail customer service Um, what's interesting is that 83% or I'm sorry, 83 um, individuals answered this question and, the, and a lot of people just opted out of answering it. All right. And this is the last one. What percent of Eterna players are first in their families to attend university? So the answer is 25%. And let's see where we are. Uh, so 25% of Eterna players are first gen college students. And uh, nationally, and so this is the statistic to compare um, that I could find in 2016, 37% um, of undergrads were first generation college students. So that's not necessarily comparing apples to apples, but um, just to get an idea of what uh, what the picture looks like as far as first generation college goers. And let's see, I think the next one is the, the podium. All right. And... So who won? Okay, the, the, the top three. Congratulations. And oh, it is. Okay, thank you for participating. Hope you all enjoyed. Um, we just have a few more slides and then we'll get to our recommendations and conclusions. Um, congratulations. Amy. <laughs> um, so another question that was asked on the survey was about uh, player motivation. And so uh, here is just a word cloud of those motivations mentioned. And of course, some of the biggest things were the experience and the community and the science about it. The puzzles and class um, were the top ones. There are other things like uh, the hands-on, um, being able to do that, the gaming part of it, a lot of unique um, information that was provided there. I'm on my other screen. Okay. And then we did, we're able to do a comparison on how um, people, how players heard about Eterna. 
And so in 2015, um, major oh, sorry, hitting all kind of buttons. How people heard about Eterna. And so in 2015, we saw that it was um, things like YouTube and Novo actually was the biggest one. Um, the internet, the internet searches came up a lot. Um, just searching like game science games or games like Folded. I saw that a couple of times in the research. Um, or friend class, the documentary, things like that, which was similar to what was found in 2023. Um, the school increased though, um, hearing it from a professor, the news or news articles, um, NOVA was still in there, internet was still in there, but you saw a lot more um, interpersonal um, communication there or finding out from, like I said, from school. And then um, also looking at the countries in which uh, the players represent. In 2015, in that survey, we saw um, USA, of course, was the highest, but then we saw a good diversity uh, or a wide diversity of countries that were represented. Um, and that was 205 people that responded on that one. In this one, we had 93 uh, people respond, but we saw a little bit of a smaller diversity, but um, we did see that USA was the most um, represented. One interesting thing was the languages. And so we know that um, about 70% of the player base do speak Spanish. I'm sorry, do speak English only. But what I thought was interesting was that 22% speak at least two languages. Um, and those could uh, included like Spanish and French. Um, German was even in there. And then 8% speak at least three languages. So this is really fascinating um, to find out there. And just briefly, um, some of the recommendations that came out of this particular uh, research was just um, that players do really seem to be motivated um, by the impact Eterna has on science um, for their own um, use and things like that, but their own education, but also seeing the bigger impact that Eterna has on the world and the field of science. And so um, one of our recommendations is just to have constant um, or up-to-date information as we currently do, but continuing that um, about previous labs, uh, current labs, things like that. And because we see the shifting, um, so where more uh, professors and school and education is really focusing or starting to use Eternum, really having this double duty in research and teaching. Um, about RNA science. Also, knowing that one of the biggest things that people uh, liked about this community is that there is a sense of community. And so continuing to build that, um, such as a regular podcast um, with players and with uh, professional scientists, looking at different labs. I know we have um, that in the forum, um, but also spreading that reach a little bit more. And then um, just information about upcoming lab designs and different things that can be amplified um, to the player base and to in, incite other uh, players outside of Eterna right now. There's also been uh, talk, I know some of you have heard about this an Eterna ambassador idea um, where you can have players representing Eterna at different conferences and not necessarily, um, it could be science conferences, but also gaming um, conferences and things like that at face-to-face -face events. Um, and then regional meetups, so having another opportunity for us to get together for citizen science, uh, for Eterna, different events, um, and having it at different conferences that may not be uh, specifically related, again, like gaming conferences. With these regional meetups, it just really continues to build that sense of community and reinforces social connections between the players. And so um, just a few recommendations, probably not new things that you've heard, but definitely something that um, could be great for Eterna. Mm -hmm. And then Ronald, I'll turn it over to you for just our final conclusions. Uh, uh, can, Carmen, can we go back one slide, please? Yes, of course. Yeah, And um, I, I think uh, uh, the sudden, in the chat, there's a lot of excitement about this idea of an Eterna ambassador program. And that's uh, one of our recommendations to have some sort of program where if you're if you've been a player for a long time and you're known in the Eterna community, um, you can apply to represent Eterna officially in face-to-face uh, -face events at 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 science meetings or at you know video game conventions. Like there's an Aust in Austin, Texas, there's a video game convention this week, um, this weekend. So things like that, wherever they may be happening and where you live. And, and uh, I'm done with, with that part. Uh, okay. part. 
Um, thank you. Uh, so one third of Eterna players indicated that they are motivated uh, to play for the larger impact of science um, and to contribute to the lab. And in the future, um, we'd like to do interviews with players, so not just collect quantitative data, but qualitative data, um, and also talk to the developers of, or the development team in Eterna and also to do just uh, research with the scientists and and figure out where uh, Eterna fits in with citizen science and with video games. Um, and that con that concludes my part of the presentation. And Carmen, that's it. Thank you so much for listening, and enjoy. <laughs>